If you spot this on your neck, your cortisol levels may be dangerously high. Now, what's funny is that lots of people come into my practice and they say, you know, I feel so stressed. And they're showing all the signs and symptoms of stress. But then there are other people who come in and they don't say they're stressed at all. And their body is actually showing the exact same signs and symptoms of stress. So in this video, we're going to talk about one specific area of the body, what it says about how stressed you are, and the three main reflex zones I notice are strongly correlated with adrenal stress. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, board licensed acupuncturist and doctor of acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine and author of the health book Master of the Day. So let's jump in. Now there would be no way I could shoot a video on the stress response and where it shows up in the body without talking about a bit of my own story. I mean, for a lot of people, they call some of these signs and symptoms adrenal fatigue. Now, while that is not necessarily a real medical diagnosis day to day, the symptoms themselves are real and they indicate pretty significant physiological dysfunction. In my own journey, in my own journey of getting sick and in my own journey of healing, there was a phase of my life in my early 30s where after working 80 hours a week for a prolonged period of time, eventually I woke up one night in the middle of the night with my first heart palpitation. Unfortunately for me, it woke me up in the middle of the night and it sent a jolt of adrenaline through my body. So I woke up and I felt my heart fluttering and I felt electrical sensations going through my legs. It doesn't make it very easy to fall back asleep when that happens. It wasn't just a one time or a two time or a 50 time occurrence. It was the beginning of years of HPA axis dysregulation. This symptom was just one of the very first signs that I had pushed my body beyond where it should be and that this was the straw that broke the camel's back. As time went on for me, not only did I continue to have heart palpitations, not just one once a day, but 20 times a day. And on top of that, I had insomnia almost every single night. No matter how early I disconnected from work, I couldn't sleep. I had lost 10 to 15 pounds, and if you look at how thin I am, I don't have 10 to 15 pounds to lose. My stomach, my digestive system had almost entirely shut off in the sense that I had no appetite, I lost weight, I was nauseous all the time, I couldn't digest anything, and on and on and on it went. Now, looking back at this sort of period of adrenal fatigue, what this really was, was I was exposing myself endogenously to too many stress hormones for too many years. And the reason why I was doing that or how that was happening was that I was pushing myself excessively and working way too long hours. In this video, we're going to talk about three of the main reflex zones that I encourage my patients to look out for. Because looking back at my own story of getting sick, if I spotted these, I could have recognized this a year or two before I got really sick. And by the time I had noticed that I was way too sick, it was too late. You know. At that point, you're looking at a six month to two to three year healing journey and recovery from these kinds of chronic stress hormones like this. Now let's talk about this area of the upper back, right where the cervical spine meets the thoracic spine, is an area that sometimes gets a fatty deposit. Now this fatty deposit is sometimes called a buffalo hump. If you can imagine what a buffalo looks like, they have these big fluffy humps on the top of their shoulders there. And this area sometimes shows up in a condition called Cushing syndrome. The reason that this happens is that excessively high levels of cortisol, one of our key stress hormones, lead to a hyperaccumulation of fat in lots of different areas. Sometimes it's called moon face, sometimes it's called buffalo hump right up here, uh, and obviously central obesity right around the midsection. All of these can be accelerated from excessive levels of stress hormones in your body. Now, why does Cushing syndrome happen to certain people? One thing that's important to talk about is just because you're exposed to chronic unrelenting stress doesn't mean you're going to develop the buffalo hump or Cushing syndrome on its own. Cushing syndrome can come from, again, circulating levels of cortisol that are way too high for too long, it can come from corticosteroid use. Some people are chronic corticosteroid users. And as a result, it's mimicking this exact same state internally. And other people very rarely can develop this as a result of tumors that happen. Now, again, most people who are exposed to really, really chronic stress do not develop Cushing syndrome, which is very important to remember. But you may see people like this, and it may not be obvious as to why a fat deposit here between the shoulder blades would be related to chronically elevated levels of stress, stress hormones like cortisol, for example. I mean, after all, if you're exposed to chronic health problems or chronic symptoms, sometimes it's not even easy to know where they're coming from. I mean, that's the reason I put together that free guide below, which is it's really the root cause quiz from traditional Chinese medicine point of view. You know, if you're having heart palpitations or insomnia, or you're having constant indigestion and food just won't settle in your stomach, take that quiz, go through that free guide because it's going to show exactly the organs from a TCM point of view that are the root cause of that symptomatic pattern. We've actually put together a whole bunch of linked videos for each organ system that can help you suss out really where this is coming from and what part of the body. So download that. Cushing syndrome aside, the buffalo hump and the moon face, what are some other signs and symptoms of stress that you 
may not notice as much, right? Because again, I, I found it very enlightening. How did I get myself so sick? How did I miss the signs and symptoms? And yet so many people that I see come into my clinic and they see the exact same thing. So I would say there are three reflex zones that you should pay close attention to. Number one is basically the masseter muscles, right? The jaw and the sternocleidomastoid muscle, the jaw. People come in all the time. They have chronic TMJ, they have chronic tension. A lot of the time, this is strongly correlated with the stress response. It is not the only thing, right? There can be structural reasons, there can be biomechanical reasons, but most of the time when I see people who don't have this every day and they suddenly come in, it's during a period of high stress. So you can think, if I'm experiencing a lot more jaw tension or TMJ lately, I need to really dial back what's going on in my life right now. The reflex zone number two is the sternocleidomastoid muscles. Sometimes what happens is people are actually feeling, you know, this tension all along the neck all day long. And most of the time people resort to structural explanations, right? If you go to a PT or a chiropractor, they may May say all that this is is just you know your posture is terrible you're hunched over like a caveman but that's only one possible cause because lots of people sit all day long and don't have any neck or jaw pain at all for some people the second sign that you're under more stress than you think is excessive tension in these sternocleidomastoid muscles, these big meaty muscles of the neck here. The third is actually chest tightness, right? So chest symptoms are the most obvious. This is a precursor to, to elevated heart rate, heart palpitations and arrhythmias, things like that. If you're having an elevated heart rate or you're noticing a lot of sensation in your chest, or you might just be having palpitations, right? If you're having a dysrhythmia like that, then chances are you are obviously under very high levels of stress and you may not even know it. In traditional Chinese medicine, we view the heart as basically the center of the nervous system. The heart is basically like not only the physical organ, but also metaphorical in a way. Just like when someone says something or like you fall in love with someone, we say it affects the heart. We say heartbreak, right? When something doesn't go well in love. Your physical heart is not broken, obviously. So what does heartbreak mean? It's a cultural concept. So when people are really happy, we say that it strengthens the heart function. And when people are going through serious adverse events, it does affect the heart. But the heart primarily is the mirror of the nervous system. When people are happy, they're healthy, they're at rest, usually the heart function is more coherent. And when they are not, when the opposite is true, you get an elevated heart rate even after you stopped working. You can get palpitations and you can get irregular heart rate. The electrical signals are easily disrupted by stress hormones. Thinking of the heart as the center of the nervous system, it's no surprise that a lot of symptoms of elevated stress hormones we feel in the chest. And one final little cascade here that's helpful to know because I wish I knew this before I got sick was that there's a two to three part phase of going through this sort of burnout, this kind of adrenal fatigue as people call it. The first level, let's just say, is you notice the heart rate being elevated. Any of us exposed to stress, the physical stress of exercise, the stress of work, get an elevated heart rate. That's normal. But if your heart rate is elevated for too prolonged of a period of time, especially when you've stopped working, you may notice on a rough day, it takes a couple hours for the heart rate to come down. You're noticing it in your chest. If that goes on for a while, that elevated heart rate, we start to see the heart skip. So you get a palpitation. And if the palpitations keep going on because you haven't gotten things under control, then you may get palpitations again and again and again. The way I think about exhaustion of the nervous system, one of the ways you can think about it is your heart rate higher than normal? Is it staying higher than normal longer? Are you having palpitations? And are you having anxiety or panic attacks? That's a good spectrum to think of. How severe is my nervous system? being dysregulated. Now these symptoms are very common in my private practice and I work with a limited number of new patients every single month in my clinic in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine. So if you guys would like to reach out, you can just call my clinic, dralexheincom forward slash clinic or click the link down below this video. And I've also put together a brand new online program called Introduction to Healing with Traditional Chinese Medicine. If you guys were ever curious where a lot of your symptoms come from, what are daily lifestyle practices you can do and what's a general overview of this totally different view of health and longevity, check it out. It's the link right below this video in the description I'd love to see you inside. And I also have another very interesting video on this exact topic right there.